Welcome to Haltech Elite NSP Training Part 69. In this training module, we're going to be taking a look at the basics of our closed loop boost control. We're going to learn the fundamentals of what's going on with the proportional, integral, and derivative gains and how that drives the response and the control within this closed loop style format. We're going to be building on this in the next training module, looking at some additional things and in data logs so we understand what to look for and read. But this is going to be the fundamentals. Let's jump in here so we can take a look at the basics. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at the fundamentals of our closed loop boost control using our Haltech Elite with our NSP software. Our last tutorial, we focused on the open loop style boost control, which is very simplistic. It's just going to be outputting a certain level of duty cycle to the boost control solenoid to reach the boost that we're after. Now we went through some of the correction factors that we have for duty cycle based on air temperature, coolant temperature, and other variables. And then we also talked about some basic strategies to implement for boost control. So we did boost by gear and RPM. We did boost by ground speed. We also introduced the concept of using a trim pot to be able to vary the boost on the fly. This tutorial now we're going to be building upon what we've already talked about in the last few tutorials for boost control and turbocharge and wastegates, how everything's going to work fundamentally, functionally. And we're going to now introduce the closed loop idea for boost control. Closed loop is a little bit more complex and it does take a little bit of time to get used to operating and tuning in closed loop. Now I'm going to try to break this down in this tutorial as simplistic terms as possible so we can see how the closed loop routine is going to actually work. Now the next tutorial we're going to get into closed loop boost control a little bit further. Again, what we're covering in here and trying to keep it relatively condensed because it is a pretty complex topic going through these fundamentals, the key things that we need to take away for the boost control, and then we'll worry about how to deal with our correction factors and taking a look at some logged data in our next tutorial. Let's jump in here and let's take a look at where we can find turning on our closed loop boost control, and then the key variables and things to keep in mind within the closed loop routine. All right, first thing we're gonna do here is move from our boost control page and we're going to jump over here into our navigation area here. So I'm going to go into main and then go into the navigation tree. We're going to head down here under engine functions. That's where we find our option here, boost control. Now, if you haven't turned on your boost control yet, we're going to make sure that we have it toggled on right here so we can see boost control is toggled on. Now here we're going to jump into our boost control area and we are going to go through the setup and configuration details for boost control, specifically for closed loop. Now, a few things I want to mention here in the beginning of the tutorial, and I want to go and kind of reiterate this. The last few tutorials, we talked about the setup, configuration, mechanically for the boost control. This is super important if we want closed loop boost control to work correctly. So let's go over some fundamentals here. We're going to find that in an internal wastegate, and we've talked about the functionality of an internal wastegate, we have our boost control solenoid that we're going to be controlling. It's going to be a three-port solenoid. We're going to have ports one, two, and three on the solenoid. Port one in the internal wastegate, that's gonna be a vent. Port three, that's gonna be our pressure in typically from our compressor source. And then port two is gonna to go to the nipple on the actuator of the internal wastegate. When we're controlling the boost control solenoid with the solenoid hooked up in this configuration, 0% duty cycle will be essentially wastegate actuator spring pressure. If that's 10 pounds, if that actuator is right at 10, that's going to be giving you 10 pounds. It's the same equivalent of just connecting a vacuum line from the nipple to the pressure source and just letting it function mechanically. Now, when we go and energize the solenoid all the way up to 100%, that'll be maximum boost. That'll give us that usable range that we're expecting. We don't want the boost control to work in any kind of an inverted state where 100% duty cycle would get you low boost and 0% duty cycle gets you maximum boost. It's important that we have your routing configuration for an internal wastegate and a three port solenoid, just as we find here on the screen. Now, if we have an external wastegate, we're gonna hook things up a little bit differently. We're gonna find on our three port solenoid, port one, two, and three, in this orientation, port one will go to our pressure source, typically the compressor cover, for boost pressure reference. Now we also, on an external wastegate, have two ports to deal with. We have a top port and a bottom port. That bottom or side port on the wastegate always has to tap into and reference the same boost pressure source. So you can simply put a T and T your pressure source, one going to the port one on your boost control solenoid, and then the other going to that side or lower port on the wastegate. Now, 
we'll find on the boost control solenoid, our port three, that's gonna be vent to atmosphere. That's where we dump excess boost pressure. And then port two is gonna be running to the top port on the wastegate. In this orientation, 0% duty cycle gets us the wastegate spring level. The same as just hooking up a vacuum line from our pressure source right to that side or lower port in the wastegate. Things will function purely mechanical and it will hold and build or should hold and build whatever that rated spring pressure is going to be. Then when we energize the boost control solenoid all the way up to 100% duty cycle, we'll be able to get the maximum boost that we can see out of our spring combination and our wastegate placement that we have for our turbo system. This is important again that we're working between this zero minimum boost and 100 maximum boost range for controlling the boost control solenoid in this closed loop control. If we have it inverted, things won't work properly. So it's very, very important that we have those fundamentals, those basics. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you wanna see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you wanna go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't wanna miss any of the videos we're gonna be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.